All right. How's everybody doing tonight? My name is Blaine Gilmer, and this is Recruiting Every Second, a Believe Podcast Network show that is all about recruiting in the SEC. Some of the most major recruits, most highly coveted prospects in the entire country, and we have two of them here with us tonight. Very proud to be bringing you two of the top recruited pass catchers in the country in Oscar Delp and Kojo Antwi. Guys, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing good. How are you? That's great. That's great. That's great. Uh, Oscar, Kojo, so we've been trying to schedule this for a while. with A lot of busy schedules. Oscar, yep. you've had the cross going on, Kojo, man. You're just trying to – you're just trying to navigate this recruitment and all the stuff that you got got going on over there at Lambert too. So, um, just I'll let you go first, uh, Oscar, and then and then Kojo. What's it been like just navigating through this process? How busy has it been? You know, with not being able to do visits, but still trying to go through your recruitment. I mean, it's definitely been tough. Uh, just kind of coaches blowing you up all day, trying to get you on Zooms every week, every day. I mean, it definitely gets uh, pretty constant, but I mean, uh, I was playing, I played lacrosse, so I was, I had that going. I'm always had my schedule full with something. So, I mean, I was always getting out of the house doing stuff. I mean, I wasn't just sitting around doing Zooms all day, but I mean, it's definitely a uh, different, just building relationships with people only over the phone and not even getting to see them in person yet, but I'll be soon. Go Joe. Um, yeah, it was tough as well, you know, at the beginning. Um, it was pretty hectic, you know, coaches blowing you up and stuff. But, you know, as soon as I dropped my top five, you know, coaches started, you know, just stopped. That ended you know, a lot of that, huh? Yeah, it just ended a little bit. So, you know, I got a little cushion, you know. I'm cooling right now, so. That's good. But, that's good. You know, with, with Oscar, uh, you know, you haven't narrowed it down really from your top 13 yet, of, like officially or anything that you did. I mean, you, but you do have kind of a set group here. We're going to talk about those visits that are coming up here in June. You have uh, official visits to South Carolina, Florida, Georgia. And just today, uh, you told me you've set one to Michigan. So a little, you know, breaking news there with Oscar going up to Michigan for an official visit. And you got an unofficial to Clemson, you said, kind of because of how they they do there. So um, we'll get to Kojo, get to yours here in a minute. But Oscar, just kind of talk to me what went into the thought process of those being the guys now that it's going to open up here in June that they get your visits. Yeah, I mean, right now I feel like those schools are, have the best to offer for me and are the best places for me. I mean, that could change in the future. But, I mean, just going off my relationships with the coaches and – uh what they're starting to do with the tight end and what they've done in the past with the tight end is kind of why I've chose those schools. All right. And Kojo, you have a top five of Texas, A&M, Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, and USC. So uh, three of your top five in the SEC and then also a couple perennial, you know, traditional p college powers in USC and Ohio State. So just talk to me about the thought process of how it got whittled down to those five for you. Um, with all those schools, I feel like they put me in the best position, you know, to go to the league. You know, they all have that reputation of sending guys to the league, especially at the receiver um, position. So, you know, and, you know, the coaching staff over there as well. So, you know, having good relationships with them, you know, receivers that they developed in the past and stuff like that. So, Absolutely. So in terms of when it comes down to, deciding how it, this thing's going to break down for you. I, I assume both of you guys are going to be early enrollees, right? Yes, sir. So, Oscar, when you're when you're visiting South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, you know, you've already – Michigan, Clemson, you've already talked about the, the offense and seeing what they're doing with the tight end position. What do you need to see from these schools out of the visits when you're there in order to help you kind of further make your decision? Uh, I mean, I think when I'm there, the main thing I'm going to be looking for is just kind of the overall atmosphere of the school and just the feel of everything. I mean, you're going to be there for four years, potentially, and, I mean, you want to enjoy every day of it. You don't want to dread living there. So, I mean, I kind of want to look at everything. I mean, outside of football, how's that school going to be for me if something were to happen? I mean, just taking everything in consideration and just, uh, just the overall atmosphere of the team and just the energy that they bring and just kind of everything that they have in a program. Now, also, I think you've got some uh, family ties to a couple of your locations. Do you not? You want to talk about those? 
I do, yeah. I mean, well, my uncle played at Clemson, uh, and my mom went to South Carolina, which is, I mean, two pretty big schools. I mean, I'm getting feeling the love from all those fans every day already, and I have even – it's like I'm already there. I mean, uh, it's definitely going to be crazy when I get up there and get out to Columbia. I mean, all those fans have already made it very well known to me and everyone that they want me and that they can't wait to for me to get out there. So it's exciting. And Oscar, I believe the first time I ever talked to you, you were actually back out in uh, Houston, Texas, doing some doing some workouts and stuff like that out there this past uh, summer and stuff. So what what's that what's that been like for you? With you know, you've been out to Texas some, done some things out there, and now Texas A and M is in your top five right there, a, a Lone Star State school. I think he's talking to you, Kojo. You mean, you mean yeah. me? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I got the chance to work out with Connor. Um, you know. I met up. He lives about like two minutes from um, my brother's place in um, Houston. So, you know, I just hit him up and we got that whole thing set up. Um, but yeah. In terms of, you know, your brother living out there and, in, in, uh, in, you know, in Houston, being in the Lone Star State, how big of a factor would that be for you? You know, having a, having a brother there close to school. It is a pretty big factor considering my sister's there as well. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time in Texas. Um, you know, I spent quarantine there as well. So, but, you know, I just like the state of Texas. I like being there, but, you know, yeah, it's going to, it's heavy consideration. Of course. And now, you know, we've talked about the family ties for you, Oscar, in, in the state of South Carolina, you, Kojo, in Texas, but both of you guys are, uh, you know, Peach State products right now inside the state of Georgia. How big is it being a, uh, player inside of GHSA football was some of the best football in the country, in my opinion, in high school football and the premier college in the state of Georgia, uh, the University of Georgia Bulldogs coming after you. What's it What's it been like? Uh, what was it when you first got the offer from Georgia and what's it been like growing that relationship? Kojo, we'll let you go first this time. Um, It was one of my first offers. So like it was it was crazy when I first got it. Um. You know, just being in this state and, you know, getting an offer from, you know, a team that competes for a natty every year really means a lot. So, you know, yeah. Oscar? Yeah, I mean, I feel like some part in every kid, no matter what team you're a fan of growing up in Georgia, you always have that dream of, I mean, maybe playing for the, the hometown team and especially with it being like powerhouse like Georgia. I mean, when I got that first offer or and that offer from them, it was – I was excited. My parents were going crazy. I mean, everybody wants to play for a school that caliber and for it to be close to home is brings it to another level. That's also not the only connection you two have to the University of Georgia. You just so happen to play with a host of Georgia commits on Hustle, Inc. Um, you got Gunnar Stockton, your quarterback over there, uh, Denylon Morissette, who just recently committed to the University of Georgia – and then also um, Marquise Groves, Killerbrew. How has it been, you know, just have – I know you've been getting blown up by coaches, but how annoying have your fellow teammates been to you just trying to blow you up, saying commit to the G all the time on, on you know, group texts and all that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're I always mean, hearing it. Yeah, yeah Gunner is, yeah. you know, he's always up my butt about it, you know, trying to get me to commit and stuff, but, you know. Yeah, when we go on that visit, me and Kojo will be the only two kids that aren't committed there. So the pressure is definitely going to be yeah. on. I mean, it's going to be a yeah. it'll be a fun weekend. You can feel like everybody's watching you the whole time. Oh, how, how are they liking the visit? You know what's yeah, going yeah. on. I got you. Well, in in terms of uh, when Denylon committed, Kojo being a, a same position wide receiver, um, how how quickly did it take for for him to to reach out and be like, all right, now now it's your turn. Oh, uh, yeah, he hit me up that night. Um, he was like, you know, come be great. You know, come be that extra piece. Come be that next receiver at Georgia. And, you know, that's what he that's what he said. But There's also some, like, circular type uh, weaving in of relationships that kind of go with things. Because, Oscar, your main recruiter over there is Todd Hartley, who, you know, obviously the tight end coach over there at Georgia does a lot with special teams. But also – Shane Beamer, who's now the head coach at South Carolina, where you're taking an official visit, he was the tight end, uh, the special teams coordinator and tight end coach at Georgia 
uh, before Todd Hartley got there. So it's a small world with uh, college football coaching, recruiting. What has been something maybe that you've kind of learned about this process in terms of, you know, getting recruited for two years now? I'm sure you've seen some coaches moving around and Kojo will get to a specific one with you here in a minute, but I'm sure you've seen some coaches move around and stuff. What's that been for you like in terms of, okay, I want this relationship with these with these guys and with these programs, but I also realize there can be movement. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some coaches that you know aren't really going to go anywhere while you're there. But uh, most of the time, it's fair game. I mean, you want to build the best relationship you can with a coach, but you also have to keep it open-minded and do things that's best for you. Uh, just find out the school that has the best options for you. I mean, everyone's really told me that when you're making a decision, try not to think of just, just for a coach. Because, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why most people are decommitting when coaches leave, just because they're following the coach around. But I think for me, it's going to be a bit, a bit of a mixture. I mean, I want to find a coach that I think is going to be there for a while. And uh, just mainly just uh, the whole school part of it, everything that fits me. So I'll be okay if the coach leaves. Absolutely. And Kojo, the one I specifically want to talk about with you, one of the first coaches that kind of showed you around and helped develop a relationship at the University of Georgia with you was Nick Williams. And now he has just signed a uh, contract to be a defensive analyst with Texas A&M. Uh, kind of how does that how, how does that hit you when a guy that, you know, you knew and kind of made the, the initial connection one place now goes to another Um and then how long do you think it'll take before Nick Williams hits you up from being at Texas A&M? I mean, yeah, it was it was crazy when uh, I found out that, you know, he was signing with uh, Texas A&M because we, you know, we had a great relationship at Georgia. You know, we texted almost every day and, you know, we had, yeah, we had a really good relationship. But, um, you know, just finding out that news, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it would play a big factor in him, you know, like, going to Texas A&M, but, you know, I guess it adds to, you know, Texas A&M, I guess, but, you know, Georgia's, you know, still recruiting me hard with the other coaches, like Coach Hankton, uh, Coach Smart, Coach Hartley as well, you know, Coach Cochran as well, so. But. Absolutely, and, you know, you mentioned Coach Cochran there, uh, a guy that came from Alabama, so, you know, some, some a lot of things that, that shift around. And speaking of Alabama, uh, I always like to ask guys who have Alabama kind of in their final consideration, Kojo, um, that conversation with Nick Saban when you take the 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 phone call and you're there talking to Nick Nick Saban, who's won you know numerous national championships. Uh, how is it? What what's the what? Do you have a conception in your mind? Okay, this is what it's going to be like, and is it totally different? Or just kind of talk to us about uh, talking to Coach Saban over a Zoom or a phone call or anything like that. Yeah, I've talked with Saban a couple times, but um, the first phone call I had, it was I was pretty nervous because you know he's arguably the greatest coach of all time. But um, you know that conversation, I mean, it went pretty good. You know, he just explained what that program has to offer. You know, he was pretty basic, but um, you know, he was just explaining what that program had to offer, and you know, um, how they would develop me in their program and stuff like that. So. But, you know, I had a great talk with Coach Saban. Yeah, he's a pretty good, cool dude. Oscar, in terms of talking to head coaches, has there been anyone that stuck out to you, whether it was, you know, Jim Harbaugh at, at Michigan or, you know, Dabo Sweeney, Kirby Smart, has there been anyone of you that was maybe different than you thought they would be just from seeing them on TV, you know, growing up watching games and stuff? Is there anyone that's had a different personality to you? No, I, mean, I think all, all the coaches that I really talked to, the kind of acted the same that you'd think of. I mean, when I FaceTimed Coach O, it was just like I thought it was going to be. I mean, a lot of energy, a lot of yelling. I mean, it was cool. Um, Debo Sweeney, uh, Sweeney is one of those genuine coaches that I know. I mean, he's just like everyone thinks. I mean, he's an awesome guy, awesome coach. Same with Coach Smart. I mean, can't say enough good things about him. I mean, always talking to all of them. And every time it's – you got to think to yourself, like, man, I'm really going to have a chance to play for one of these – great coaches that are, have a history of winning and everything and it's just the reality check and it's, it's awesome if either one of y'all know Kristen miller the uh defensive defensive lineman from cedar grove you need to call him up and get him to do his coach o impersonation for you he broke it out when i was talking to him and michael in a previous episode so go back and watch that if you want a good laugh on that because they 
they were both like, the first thing I wanted to know is, is Coach O's voice real? You know, so and it, he, he, he said, I was talking to an assistant coach and they said, do you want to talk to Coach O? And he said, he said he got on there and it sounded exactly like I thought. So they're like, man, it is real. So, you know, definitely yeah. fun stuff. Definitely fun stuff there. Um, now, wanted to talk to you both about name, image and likeness. The state of Georgia, you know, where you both live, has recently just signed into law effective June 1st. Uh, that players will be able to receive money for their name, image, and likeness. Of course, that's going to be something that the NCAA has to handle here soon. Um, back when I used to talk to – when I first started talking to both of you guys, I, in fact, asked you about the the name, image, and likeness stuff because it was coming. You were like, oh, no, they don't really talk about that yet or anything. I imagine that's changed now. Um, Kojo, how are, how are the programs talking to you about name, image, and likeness? Um, yeah, um, schools are really big on, you know, building your brand and stuff like that. You know, I talk with, you know, all the schools, you know, they've all had like a plan on how to, you know, get my name out there and, you know, endorsements and stuff like that. So, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. Oscar, I've seen, uh, oh, I've actually seen with both of you, but, uh, Oscar, I've seen, a uh, custom logo that Georgia made you that they've slipped into some of those edits there trying to do the subtle, subtle hints on that. I'm sure Alabama, you know, Alabama, both of y'all were recruited by them at one point, but I'm sure schools like Clemson, you know, Florida all have a plan as well. What's it been like with you and your discussions with school on this name, image, and likeness that's coming up? Yeah, I mean, schools like Georgia and that live in those big cities and uh, have like locations like, I mean, we have Hartsfield, Jackson, all that. I mean, one of the those import airports with people going in and out in the country. I mean, there's no better place to build your brand than in Atlanta or in Athens around all these people passing by. I mean, they just show you what their advantages that they have of their school and what they can do for you. And just, uh, they were showing me their TikTok followers. I mean, you wouldn't think about that. But I mean, you think about it, you get thrown up on there, you're getting a bunch of followers and uh, a lot of recognition. So I know it. Uh, Coach, the other day, I saw Alabama put out there the only college program in the country that has over a million uh, followers and subscribers across all their platforms and stuff like that. So definitely it's becoming a bigger, bigger and bigger deal in terms of all that. So uh, just how big of a deal is that going to be for each one of y'all? Just real quick, Oscar, big deal for you, NIL, like something you're just kind of starting to think about or? Yeah, I mean, I think definitely it's going to be awesome. I mean, being a skilled position player, uh, they're all really excited for it. I mean, in football, they talk about how the linemen aren't really recognized, but all the skill the people who score touchdowns are. So, I mean, you make all you need is one big play and your name's out there, and a lot of good things can happen. So, I think it'll be exciting. Uh, y'all score a touchdown, and the linemen did a good job blocking. Y'all going to throw them some bones from your, from your yeah. endorsement? <laughs> Might have to. Might have to. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, the next thing, you know, wanted to get to is – when you're when you're talking about decision time and you know right here are you guys that want to wait until the do the whole hat ceremony thing on early signing day uh, once you know are you going to be a, a type of player that just goes ahead and, and commits uh, Kojo you can go first but I want to hear kind of what both of you are thinking about how it's going to go um, I was planning on you know after these visits I'm planning on committing on my mom's birthday july 5th so i can just get it over with before senior season and you know just focus on the season absolutely oscar yeah i mean uh, i think i'm gonna commit sometime in september uh, my mom's birthday is at the end of september so i might just go ahead and do it on her birthday i mean everything she's done for me i think she deserves it y'all too yeah so i want to wait till september yeah 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 I want to wait till September, though, so I can get out to some games also. I mean, I think I'm going to have an idea of where I want to go after these officials. But, I mean, just to get out some games, I think that'll be awesome also. 100%. That, that, that sounds great. Well, both of you guys um, have definitely chosen programs. And this is kind of our last topic here. But you've both chosen programs that are heavily uh, involved in producing NFL talent. Um, the NFL draft just just came around. Uh, and you know a lot of the the programs the the Texas A and M's Alabama Georgia's Ohio State Alabama and Ohio State both put out ten NFL players this year Kojo uh, Georgia nine um, 
Clemson always puts out a bunch of pros. How closely did you two watch the the NFL draft and kind of see where people from your position were drafted in this in this 2021 NFL draft? Uh, Oscar, what, how how'd that kind of come across to you? Yeah, I mean, I watched. Uh, I saw a good amount of tight ends get drafted. I mean, I saw one only had I think like. 15 catches or something, something crazy. It was uh, on Instagram or something. Right? I mean, you just, it just shows you go for one of those programs, you make an impact. I mean, you don't have to go crazy, but I mean, they can get you, get you drafted. But it's, it's awesome to see. Absolutely. And before I get to Kojo, Oscar, a question I wanted to ask you, how uh, these programs, how many of them are talking to you about, you know, splitting out, doing a lot of uh, wide out type stuff too, as well, the stuff that you already do at Western South. I know you and Dylan Fairchild, who's committed to, to or going to Georgia, uh, you did a lot of both downhill blocking together, but you would see Western South split you out a lot too. So how much has that been taught to you about in your recruitment? Yeah, it's been talked about a bunch. I mean, every school wants to use me as a, one of those tight ends that can threaten the vertical because that'd be a vertical threat and uh, get open and catch passes, whether that be line me up in the slot, maybe outside, uh, occasionally out wide, and always going to have me block in some plays. I mean, just, just move me around before the snap and just uh, find different ways for, to use that position to its p- full potential. That's great. And, uh, Kojo, you know, NFL draft for you, uh, how much did you watch it? I know, obviously – uh, Alabama probably had to catch your eye with what they put out at the receiver position this year. Um, but just in general, you know, how, how big a deal was that for you seeing the schools that are in your top five uh, pump out a lot of NFL talent? Oh, yeah. I watched the first few rounds. Um, saw Bama, obviously, you know, two first round derived picks, um, you know. But, um, you know, just watching, you know, the stats that, you know, these receivers put up and, Stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So absolutely. So you, you guys uh a lot of a lot of to look forward to this summer. It's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy ride. You both got those those officials. Uh Kojo again is taking officials to all five of his top five USC, Texas AM, Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, Oscar taking his visits to South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Michigan. And then, of course, Clemson for an unofficial, probably maybe get to an official later. We'll we'll see how that all works out. Uh, Kojo is going to be committing on July 5th and Oscar sometime in September. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining Recruiting Every Second. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having us. All right, guys. That's this edition of Recruiting Every Second, a Believe Podcast Network show. You can catch the videos on Bulldog Illustrated's YouTube channel and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, and we will catch you next time.